Hi, my name is Dom Hebro and I'm here to help you get the most knowledge out of the information, the data you get from Metla Toledo instruments. Uh, today I'd like to show you that uh, there is a big difference between monitoring the temperature in the reaction vessel and doing calorimetry as far as having an understanding of how exothermic a chemical reaction is. I'd like you to acknowledge that uh, temperature is not the best indicator of how exothermic a uh, chemical reaction is. Uh, by giving you this example, you may actually underestimate the amount of energy coming out of a process, and that may result uh, into uh, overestimating the cooling capacity of your plant vessel, and as a result, a uh, runaway reaction on a larger scale. I'm going to show you that uh, the delta T, what's commonly used, uh, called the delta T, which is the temperature difference between the reaction mixture and the bath or the jacket, is actually a better indicator of reaction heat uh, as far as measuring the magnitude of uh, the reaction heat. But it's not perfect, especially when you have the temperature in the vessel changing because the reaction gets pretty exothermic, so it doesn't tell you the whole truth. And in this case, reaction heat is actually the best, the absolute indicator that you can find in order to uh, develop a safe and reliable process. Now, to begin with, I'd like to you to imagine that you're using this glass flask and you are measuring the temperature and you have an exothermic reaction. I'm going to switch now to the eye control window so you can see or you can imagine what you would be able to observe in a real life scenario. We are doing an oxidation reaction, they are known to be exothermic and at this time point here that I show, uh, we introduce oxygen to the vessel, all right? And you see there is a slight temperature increase for a few minutes, a couple of degrees, it goes back down to the baseline. I'm sure that most people would actually, including me by the way, would ignore that phenomenon because it's uh, only a few minutes and it's very moderate. So you may assume that there is no uh, safety risk or anything at all. And if you monitor temperature at, at a given time, which is about 15 minutes after the introduction of oxygen to the vessel, you have a strong temperature increase in the vessel. That, I mean, unless you're not in front of the system, which may happen, by the way, uh, you're not going to miss that. Uh, it's a 20 degrees increase. You're going to conclude it's a pre exothermic reaction. Okay. What you may not be able to see is the fact that upon introduction of oxygen you actually have a pretty significant T minus TJ difference. That's what I'm plotting right now uh, in, in a dotted red line. You can see that you, you go up to about 3-4 degrees. That's not uh, huge but that's significant. It's a decent amount of energy. And you can see that the, the heat spike is actually more visible by plotting T minus TJ versus TR. Uh, it gives you an idea of when the maximum uh, temperature increase occurs, all right? That's when it seems like the maximum heat occurs, and we're going to see it's not the case. And it gives you, a, a, you know, the finer detail of reaction mechanism that you will not be able to see by monitoring the temperature. Now, by looking at the heat profile, that's a, a slightly different story. I want to show you that you actually pick up the maximum heat release a couple of minutes before the temperature in the vessel reaches a maximum or before T minus TJ reaches a maximum. The reason being that uh, part of the heat that's uh, released by the reaction meter causes the reaction temperature to go up and that actually hides the maximum point of heat release, which is a little bit sooner than you would believe otherwise. All right, so a reaction calorimetry on the EasyMax picks up the maximum uh, a little bit before uh, the temperature in the vessel reaches really a maximum. But it also gives you a quantitative indication of how much heat is coming out. You have 3, 4 watt here to begin with. Uh, it's about 30, 40 watt per liter, again, not huge, but significant. And it goes up to about 60 watt, uh, 100 milliliter scale that corresponds to about 600 watt per liter. I mean, nothing like you, you could imagine scaling up beyond a couple of liter at uh, laboratory scale. So really something you have to pick up before you go to, 
to a large scale. Otherwise, you would really cause a runaway uh, reaction. What you don't want to have to face, you know, in your life as a chemist or engineer. With this, I'd like to conclude and give you a couple of web links to uh, the empty web page where you're going to find information about EasyMax, OptiMax, and RC1 and calorimetry capabilities in general. Also, I invite you to uh, visit my Twitter uh, channel where I uh, uh, post the latest information uh, based on what I read uh, in the process safety and, and process development literature. And also, uh, feel free to visit my LinkedIn page and account where you're going to find uh, the same links and the same information plus a few blogs. Thank you.